Next up in the workshop, Dungeons and Doggies from Steam Forge Games. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to the paint studio. We are continuing with Dungeons and Doggies. Now I just have to find out where you went to, little one. And there we are. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. So we're still going to continue with the uh, St. Bernard Cleric. And we are getting there. see what do we write alright so what we're going to do is we're going to try and see if we can't uh, about that in a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to, you know, see if we can't uh, make some cork looking stuff. On the caps of these uh, Sorry, kind of lost in thought on the caps of these um, jars the cleric has. So we're going to paint it much in the same way as the uh, as the wraps. We're going to start with the Zandri dust. And again, nobody can see what I'm doing because I hold it so far up, so close, so that I can see. And that means that the people at home can't see. But that's okay. We'll get things figured out. to go back and do a little bit more metal. And that's okay. No, you know, we can try and do some fancy things and see if we can't fix um, fix some of the little oopses that we've made or we can just kind of go on and keep blocking out stuff. We can go back and realize that we've missed some of the metal that we've been meaning to get. And I say we do some of the metal that we've been meaning to get. So, you know, I've been spending a lot of time on, uh, on this one cleric, and I kind of ignored the rest of the party. And that's okay. They're primed, and they're ready to go. And any time I'm ready to paint them, they'll be there waiting for me. Yeah, so it would seem
at these casks, flasks, whatever you want to call them, are actually held by these little metal rings. But figuring that out has, you know, changed a little bit how we're going to do things. There's nothing wrong with that. We'll get it all fixed up here. And we will be on our way. metal that apparently I missed. It happens. You go back and you notice little details, you know, you put a, you put away the paint, you put away the paint, you put away the miniatures for a little bit, you pick it back up, and you're like, oh, well, look there. <laughs> apparently that's, uh, that's supposed to be metal, or that's supposed to be leather that I've somehow missed. But the great thing with miniatures is that even if you miss it, you can go back and catch it later. Or you can leave it. Or change how you decide. You know, change how you want to do it. Any number of things, really. Like this little puppers. This little puppers has so many different things. That you just don't think about. with some of that silver added back in. It's starting to look real good. And we are going to grab Bath is our gold. more of a brassy color really than a gold color which I think will be absolutely perfect for the edges of the barrel hanging from this cleric's neck. As with all good St. Bernard's. along quite nice. So now we've blocked in most of the uh, main colors. Now it's time to start finessing and doing highlights and all that good stuff. So now it's basically painting everything that you've already painted, 
but we've known this, we've been down this road before. So nothing new here. Except, of course, you know, when you can't find the paint you're looking for. my wall where you know it belongs because that's its home it shouldn't be all over my painting table but since I'm not terribly diligent at putting away my paints it's uh, actually there's a good chance that it's still on my painting table Kind of surprised. Uh, I kind of surprised myself when I actually put away the paints. Like, oh, look at that! And I actually remembered to put them away. So now all we're doing is just kind of hitting the centers. what was painted before. Just to give that bit of highlight. You don't have to paint right to the edge or paint right into the crevices. You want to actually leave those a little bit darker. So you get that nice sense of shadow. And since this, you know, since this pupper seems to be having mostly leather, and we went kind of with a dark leather look to it, we're going to leave it mostly in the dark realm, in the dark ranges. Because, well, why not? to see exactly what I'm doing. Camera's kind of kind of far away from where I'm actually painting. But kind of kind of hoping to do our best. So a lot of this is going to be really hard to see. You know, like I can show you that I've kind of started to repaint the leather, but the, it's not the it's not really going to show yet. And that's okay. It will eventually. Because we're going to start building up some of those colors on the edges to hopefully give it kind of a, a worn look. Hmm. Oh, 
No. So I think today we're mostly going to concentrate on the uh, satchels and the, you know, the cool bits that are on the on the back of the Saint Bernard. You know, all of his little weird. pouches and all of them. and the belts and kind of stuff and we're going to kind of attempt to give it a bit of a worn look at least in spots figure this uh, stuff's got to be able to use its stuff somehow. And if it's an adventurer, none of this stuff is going to be in super pristine condition. And that's just kind of a fact of life. Right, so we're going to give it some wear spots. We're going to give it some brighter spots. one here you might want to wire your paints down just a little bit more than usual and let it that let it just layer up not 100% precise if you don't quite have every little part done, that's okay. It kind of adds to that feel. Worn leather.
sometimes you can actually surprise yourself with how well something just kind of turns out that you didn't think was going to turn out at all. up here nobody can see you can just look at my shirt but that's okay I'll try and zoom in a little bit I have to find a way so that you can actually see you know when I'm painting when I'm actually painting it not you know, well, you know, if I paint down here it's not too bad you still can't necessarily see exactly what the you know what the brush strokes or what the where I'm putting the colors necessarily but at least I have a working idea of where things are going here in a second is it? Just stop here for a second and then kind of show you what I've kind of what I've done. I've done is I've done a couple of layers on the leather to try and make it look a little worn. You know, like this poor doggo has been walking with his with his you know trusty company for who knows how long. They've been, you know, so the leather's a little worn, a little 
you know, a little brighter in some areas, a little darker in other areas from dust and grime and being folded and use and everything like that. And then we're going to use a much brighter, well, not really brighter, I guess, just a different, different brown. hopefully stand out for the stitching that they've so nicely provided for us. thing that we'll do just before we go is we'll do a black wash on the on the metal again it's more just to kind of age it up Since I have small, small amounts of metal, I kind of want to be a little bit more precise. So I'm going to actually keep using my small layer brush because it's nice and precise and it has a point. And it'll actually, let me put the wash right where I need it and not slop it over everything else. I mean, in some cases you want it, to, you know, you want it slopped everywhere, but in other cases you need it to be just a hair more precise. And in this case, I need the precision. pretty much going to be it for us today. To tune in next week. We shall have the dog mostly finished, if not completely finished. So, until then, paint safe everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you soon in the workshop.